Tonight, families are still evacuated from their homes along parts of the Front Range due to wildfires. Dry conditions and no precipitation is combining to keep those fires going. There are three that we're watching in particular. The Cameron Peak Fire burning in Larimer County west of Fort Collins. The Calwood Fire and the Left Hand Canyon Fire both in Boulder County. The Calwood Fire has damaged at least 26 homes. Sky 9 flew over the area today to see what's left and it just captured entire neighborhoods that are burnt to the ground. Both fires burning in Boulder County did not grow significantly over the last 24 hours, but homes continue to be threatened tonight. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office says close to 3,000 people have had to leave their homes because of the Calwood and the Left Hand Canyon fires. The evacuation orders for both fires line up right next to each other. The entire towns of Jamestown and Ward plus surrounding areas have evacuated Highway 7, Left Hand Canyon Drive, Overland Road and parts of US 36 are still closed. There's a three mile stretch of US 36 that did reopen today from Broadway to Neva Road. Nine News reporter Liz Kotalik is in Boulder County after a long and stressful weekend for evacuees. You won't be able to drive past 36 in Nebo here this evening as fire crews are still working to contain two wildfires that broke out within a day of each other over the weekend. The official evacuation site is here in Boulder for anybody who doesn't have a place to go. But for everyone affected by these fires, they're hoping they just have somewhere to eventually go home to. Flying over the foothills northwest of Boulder, you can see what the Calwood fire has left behind. At least 26 homes destroyed or damaged in the flames. So far, Marion Hales is not one of them. The house I'm currently in, my grandparents built, so we're the third generation in the house. On Saturday, when the plume of smoke over Jamestown became too ominous, she and her family had to do what years of mountain living has taught them. We took a permanent marker and we wrote, we're fully evacuated on our front door, and I think that was... That was the moment when I had to lean on on my husband and have a moment. The Calwood fire, the largest ever recorded in Boulder County, forced Marion and about 3000 others to go elsewhere. That plume was always visible as they drove about an hour to her parents house in Sugarloaf. But a day later, but I couldn't believe it. The left hand Canyon fire forced them to pack up again. It wasn't just one household. We had to then fit two households into vehicles and in a garage. Now from a safer place in Erie, Marion has kept herself updated, watching from afar as crews try to contain two fires, threatening their family's homes and their land. Not only do you lose your house, you lose the trees, you lose the habitat, you lose the wildlife. And so I think that's the, the second layer of heartbreak that comes with forest fires. A heartbreak that Marion says has always been a possibility, but still one that's hard to imagine when reality sets in. It's the unknown. It's the waiting that is the hardest part. Boulder County has a list of all the homes affected so far on their website. We have a link to that on our website right now, 9news.com. Reporting in Boulder this evening, I'm Liz Kotelik, 9 News. The Cameron Peak Fire is burning in Larimer County and it has surpassed 200,000 acres this weekend. That means it is currently bigger than New York City. Firefighters say it's 51% contained. Strong winds and smoke have just made it nearly impossible to see out there. A silver lining, though, a small one. Uh, mandatory evacuations for a certain areas south of the fire along Highway 34 were downgraded to voluntary today. Firefighters on the Cameron Peak Fire work 16 hour days and sometimes even longer than that. It is grueling work made even tougher mentally when the fire keeps growing. A firefighter with the Colorado Division of Fire Prevention and Control told our Katie Eastman some of the many things that run through his mind on the fire line. Thoughts from a firefighter on the edge of the flames are sometimes straightforward. I about blow, got blown off my feet once. Yeah. On Friday night, Battalion Chief Dan Batten B -A -T -T -I -N. was focused on staying upright in 70 mile an hour winds. But the days on the line are long, enough time to wonder what it will take for them to end. You're out on the fire line and you just think, man, I, I just want to stop this thing, uh, but I, I can't. You know, Mother Nature is going to have to stop it at some point. Dan was there when the Cameron Peak fire became the largest in Colorado's history last week. I don't know that I could ever describe what it's actually like, um, you know, hearing a fire that sounds like a freight train. What I would want to tell people if they're listening is that all of that can be started by a campfire that wasn't fully put out uh, or, or, or not abiding by local fire restrictions. He thinks about this on the line, too. But I think about it all the time. When you're battling something this big, the thoughts creep in at all hours. I wake up sometimes 
having dreams that the the fire's coming through the camp or something and they're vivid they're kind of weird it's like i wake up i'm like oh i look out oh oh fire's not burning everybody up okay dan <laughs> thinks a lot but it's what he knows that keeps him coming back to the line i would much rather be fighting fire than doing a lot of things. The winds are lighter now in the Cameron Peak fire area, but that just means they went from 70 mile an hour gusts to 20 to 30 miles an hour. Tonight, fire crews are focused on stopping flames from spreading south and protecting buildings in the Retreat, Glen Haven and Storm Mountain areas. In Larimer County, Katie Eastman, Nine News. Along with firefighters, meteorologists are watching cooler, moisture air just to the north. We can see that clearly on the regional radar and satellite composite. The northwest flow, though, has also been kicking up the wind in some of the fire zones and all of the moisture missing Colorado for now. Temperatures have been cool at the surface with a bit of an inversion. We've had temperatures in the 40s and 50s, and we're starting to see the humidity values increase a bit, which will be helpful. We're hopeful the winds will not be increasing. Right now, they're manageable, but overnight over some of the higher passes around Allen's Park, Red Feather Lake and up toward the Estes Park area and also Cameron Peak. We could see 40 to 50 mile per hour winds here at the surface. Winds remain light out of the southwest, but our air quality remains poor. We do continue to track uh, what could be another day with red flag warnings. They've certainly been canceled, but with that smoke plume heavily descending over the downtown Denver area, we know we're in for another tough day tomorrow. We're going to cover all that in the forecast just ahead. 23 hikers are now safe after getting trapped by a new wildfire near Silverton. The U.S. Forest Service says the hikers, they were flown out of the area. The ice fire is burning near the iconic ice lake in the San Juans that's just west of Silverton. Emergency officials say the fire started about 1 p.m. near the trailhead. It's burned about 320 acres so far. The Durango Herald shared these images with us. Officials ask people to stay away from this area, but there is no imminent threat of evacuations. Neighbors along the Front Range are pitching in to help some other evacuees. Horses. There are around a thousand horses evacuated from the Cameron Peak Fire area. Those evacuation sites for the horses quickly became overwhelmed and were running out of food. Barbara Grove and Megan Mullen got together to raise more than $10,000 to buy nearly 20 tons of hay. Now they're trying to double those donations to get other emergency supplies. This is home. This is, I mean, we both live here. These are our, these are the people that we see at shows. These are our people we buy hay from. These are our friends. These are our Facebook friends. These are the people that board with us. These, I, like, it, it could be me. I mean, why? This is our, this is our home. If you'd like to pitch in, best way to connect with them is through their GoFundMe pages. We have compiled all of our wildfire coverage onto one page on our website. If you want that straight to you, you can also just text the word FIRE to 303-871-1491 and we will send you